You know, it's part of life to feel bad from time to time. There's nothing unusual about that. But where it becomes a problem is when negative emotions like fear, anger, stress, lack of confidence become regular parts of our day-to-day -day life. So in this video, I want to explain why that happens. I want to talk about the four main reasons why some negative emotions just seem to stick and overstay their welcome. Hi, I'm Stephen Burns from Mind School, and in this video we're going to be kicking off properly the series on how to manage your emotions using NLP. And I want to start off by talking some theory. I want to explain the four main reasons why some negative emotions just seem to stick and not go away. I'll also be giving you some tips along the way, and then later on in this video series, I'm going to be showing you how you can properly reverse those things. So let's get started. So the first reason why some negative emotions just seem to stick is because you've made some kind of link, an association. It's where the negative emotion, the feeling, has become fused with something in your life or some area or potentially even someone. And this is how the brain tends to work. We make connections. We link one thing with something else. When neurons fire together, they wire together. There's a really interesting but sick experiment that was done at the turn of the 20th century by two psychologists called John Brown and Rosalie Rayner, and it was called the Little Albert Experiment. And what they did was they took a young kid called Albert, funnily enough, and they placed him on a chair and they conducted a series of experiments on him. So what they did was one of them would run behind Albert and then strike an iron bar. So obviously this would make Albert afraid and he would burst into tears, he would experience a state of fear. And then right at the point where he was experiencing fear, the other psychologist would run up in front of him and flash a white rabbit in his face. Why a white rabbit? I have absolutely no idea. But then they repeated this experiment over and over again until all they had to do was to flash the white rabbit in front of Albert's face and he would suddenly burst into tears. They didn't need the iron bar. That what they'd done was they'd created an association. They'd created a link or what's often now referred to as a trigger between the feeling of fear and this white rabbit. Now, unfortunately, they just left Albert like that and then he actually started to generalise that fear to pretty much everything white. So anytime he saw something white, he would then get that fear-based response. So this is a very sick experiment, clearly, but I think it does show the power of association. And I think when we get down to it, we all have our own white rabbits. We all have our own things that just seem to trigger off negative feelings and responses. You know, they even call this nowadays being triggered, but we all have them. And um, to give you another example, I remember years ago in a previous life, I was working with a guy who I absolutely hated. You know, we were just basically chalk and cheese. And we would, you know, just argue and debate and it was just pretty horrible to have to work with this guy. And then because we were arguing all the time, there was all kinds of feelings of anger that were getting built up between the two of us. And eventually all those feelings of anger got linked to his face. It wasn't just his face, it was also his tone of voice. So anytime I saw him or I heard his tone of voice, I would get this knot of, you know, tension, anxiety and anger in my stomach. What had happened, I'd created my very own white rabbit. And we all do this, it's just the way the brain tends to work. So one of the things that you can do in NLP is you can actually start to unpick these associations. We don't have to just make do, we can actually take a look at our triggers and we can actually kind of build on top of them. We can also let them go so that they start to mean and feel something completely different. So that's the first reason why some negative emotions just seem to stick. The second reason is that we are not listening. And I don't mean this in a really kind of condescending, you know, kind of waggy finger way, you're not listening to yourself. Um, I mean it in a very respectful way. You know, one of the main reasons why we experience negative emotions is because they are our internal warning systems. They're attempting to tell us something. They're attempting to make us aware that something is potentially not right in our world and we need to do something, we need to take some kind of action. A um, classic example of this is workplace stress. Um, workplace stress is there to tell us that we need to readdress the balance, we need to approach work with a different attitude, or we need to you know, take some time off, we need to you know, not work as hard as what we currently are. 
But what do we often do when we experience workplace stress, especially if we have a really, really busy schedule? We ignore it. We just kind of push it away. Even though it's firing off in the background, we don't listen to it. We just go, okay, it'll be fine. We'll just wait until Christmas. And this might be okay in terms of a short term measure. But, you know, eventually what's going to happen is those feelings, that stress is going to escalate and turn into something more intense. Maybe one day you suddenly wake up and you just feel totally burnt out. You experience extreme fatigue and you say to your friend, I don't know how it happened. I don't know, it just suddenly appeared. But of course, when you really look at it, the warning signs were there. The stress was there to make you aware that you need to calm down. You need to, you know, address the balance. You need to slow down and change your lifestyle. So that's the second reason. The third reason why some negative emotions stick is due to mistakes in perception. And this one is absolutely huge. One of the fundamental principles of NLP is the idea that as a human being, we do not respond to reality. We respond to our inner perception of reality through our map or our model of the world. So what's happening is when we are feeling some kind of destructive emotion, what's happened is we have perceived some kind of threat through our map, through our model of the world, and this then sends a signal to the brain to flood our body full of negative feelings or chemicals that provide this bad feeling to make us aware of that threat or that potential threat. So that's the way it's meant to happen. It's working fine. But what can often happen is that we've made a mistake in the initial assessment of the threat. So we're actually sending our brain a message to flood our body full of these chemicals when we don't really need to. Or there is a threat, but we've exaggerated it through our perception and we make it so much more worse than what it needs to be. To give you an example of this, say you are waiting for your partner to come home from work. You're going to have a nice dinner, a couple of glasses, of wine. It's fajita Friday. You're going to just relax, kick back and chill out and enjoy the start of the weekend. But they're late. You don't need really think there's anything untoward happen. But you know, then they're later and they're later and they're later and they've not phoned and they always phone. So all of a sudden, your mind starts to go into overdrive and you think, oh my God, maybe they've crashed. Maybe they're hurt. Or even worse, maybe they're cheating on me. I don't know why that's worse than um, crashing. But anyway, so you go on Google and you type in um, how often do partners cheat? And it comes up saying 50% and pretty much all the time it's with a work colleague and your mind's going totally crazy. You're totally panicking. And then all of a sudden they walk in through the front door. They had a flat tire and their battery was done in their phone. They couldn't phone you. It's totally fine. And this is an example where you've allowed your mind to go into overdrive. You're not responding to reality. You're responding to a perception, a series of movies, sounds, and internal conversations inside your mind. And those are the things that's giving your brain the signal that there's a threat in your world to flood your body with all these chemicals so you start to feel bad. So this is a process that tends to work. And this can also happen long term as well to cause negative emotions to stick. We can actually have these perceptions that become locked in our subconscious in the background of our experience. One example of this is the idea of not being good enough. So this is something that so many people have. At some stage in their life, they've made the assessment of their value, of their worth, that for some reason they don't think that they're as valuable or as worthy as so many other people around them. So they've decided that they're not good enough as a human being. And that perception has become stuck. It's locked into their subconscious and it's continually firing off these feelings because, again, your brain, your body is doing what it's meant to do because of this perception. But the root cause is that there's been a mistake in the initial assessment of that perception. So the way around this is to take a look at those perceptions, to start to investigate, to start to explore, and then clear up these initial mistakes. So the brain no longer gets the signal that there's some kind of threat in your world, and you no longer get the feelings, the chemicals that flood through your body that supply you with those negative emotions. So that's the third one. And the fourth reason why some negative emotions can just seem to stay is because we're experiencing some kind of very real ongoing threat. So this is where we're actually experiencing something that is a threat to our health or our livelihoods. So it could be some sort of health issue that you're experiencing, or maybe it's a financial thing, perhaps uh, you're maybe potentially going to lose your house or you've 
lost your job and you're really struggling just to make ends meet. So in a circumstance like this, it's understandable why you would feel anxious, why you would feel some sort of negative emotion. And it's also understandable why that negative emotion has stuck. It's not going away. That's because, you know, your brain is telling you there's some sort of threat. You need to take action. You need to do something to move as far away from the threat as you possibly can. So if this is going on with you, then I'm really sorry for that. You know, it's, it's just a horrible thing to experience. But there are some things that you can do to help out. So I think usually what happens is when the threat goes away, that's when the feelings disappear. But I think if you really listen to the threat and again, take action to start to move away from it, that can really be a cathartic experience. One of the worst things about uh, going through some sort of ongoing threat in our life is when we become paralyzed, when we freeze, when we stop taking action, that's when we become really, really trapped in the emotion. So if you actually really recognize what actions do I need to take in order to make my life better, to move away from the threat, just taking the action and making that decision to do it can make such a big difference to your emotional well-being. Because even though maybe there's still something not good in your life that's going on, but because you're actually doing something to move away from it, it just makes you feel better in the moment. The second thing is, it's also important to remember that perception will always have a part to play, even with ongoing threats. Um, usually what happens is people take the threat and then they really make it more and more dramatic inside their mind. So they over-exaggerate it and they make it a much bigger thing than what it actually is. So one way to get around this is to do something I call the two column exercise. So this is where you take a piece of paper and you divide the piece of paper into two columns. The first column, you write down the actual threats. So these are the very real things that are going on for you that are causing the threat itself. Then in the other column, you write down all of the perceived threats. So how have you made it worse inside your mind? How have you made it more dramatic? How have you made it more intense? And by doing this, it just lets you see the difference between reality and perception. And it just helps reduce it down to something just a little bit more manageable. It doesn't take the threat away completely, but it does help you deal with it on an emotional level. So those are the four main reasons why some negative emotions just seem to stick to overstay their welcome and not seem to go away. And as we progress through this uh, YouTube course on how to manage your emotions using NLP, we are going to be digging into some more solutions so that you you can start to reverse those. So hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. And of course, if you want to keep in touch with all of these videos in the series as they get uploaded, then subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so they'll appear in your feed as they get added. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you later on. Bye.